That where he comes in, I'm here hitting and I'm just trying to do my best. His hand was up, he was being defensive in that state or just firing that one. If he fires that one two at me, one two hit, boom, there's something else I'm finding control. Countering a boxer is never going to be an easy feat. What we have to look at is being able to actually create a bridge or create a connection with the boxer. So whether you're using any kind of trapping, whether it be Filipino martial arts, Wing Chun or Jeet Kune Do, we understand how important that bridge is. If the boxer fires that jab and misses me, maybe it's just too far, he's going to get away. So if Maddie's here and he fires it and I miss it, but he gets back, that's now at a kicking range. So now I'm not in my trapping range. So that's why it's important when he fires that I'm creating the connection right away. But I have two arms connecting with his one. The next arm is the one that I have to be worried about the most. If my training allows my fox out to come out and he blocks here in this moment, then I lapped that and I hit. So that's like perfect case scenario. I've created the bridge. I know where the other hand is, I hit. But any good boxer will tell you they never just fire one. There's going to be a one, two or a jab cross behind it. This is why it's very important. I slow as he comes forward that I'm still firing this motion and see the timing there is as this is coming forward, that next punch would be coming forward. If we bash or we clash right in the center here, I'm going to call this our shared center line. So our shared center line, this is my five, four, three, two, one. We're sharing two, three, four, five, right? We are here in the middle. So now it's anybody's game at this point because I don't know where his other hand is, right? If he's a good boxer, his hand's already back on his face so he can throw an additional punch. So slow-mo, if my timing's perfect, I'm here, I clash there, my training comes in, and now maybe I get a pox out, fox out entry, like fantastic. Again, perfect case scenario for me. But what if he throws that one, two, three combo? So he's here, bang, I make the contact, I lose the feeling of the hand. Right away, my spotty senses are going off using my Wing Chun skills and saying, hold on, I don't know where that hand is. It's the same scenario I had before. I have to be looking at what that threat is. He's tried two straight punches. So the rule of thumb in boxing is throw something circular now. If you throw something circular, maybe I intercept it with a pakta. But again, I don't know where that fist is. If that one comes at me again, maybe I clear that and I hit. There's lots of maybes there. There's lots of what ifs. This is why I like incorporating other styles of martial arts as well. Because if he fires that one, two, three at me, I'm going one, two, I lose connection, he throws a three, I duck under, and now maybe I use my jujitsu skills. There's never going to be a perfect scenario. But what we're trying to do is show that Wing Chun itself, will it defeat a boxer? It's not style versus style, it's person versus person. And we have to understand that size, timing, and everything plays a game in this. Maddie and I are very similar in size, so when he fires this, I have the energy to be able to hold it here. But if you fire that jab at me, and I didn't, <clears throat> if you look at it, I still didn't get hit, so I'm doing pretty good. Hopefully my training kicks in, that where he comes in, I'm here hitting, and I'm just trying to do my best. His hand was up, he was being defensive in that state, or just firing that one. If he fires that one, two at me, one, two, hit, boom. There's something else, I'm finding control. Slow-mo what happened there, he fired, he hit. I didn't feel like I could hit him. So my left hand went to his elbow, controlled the elbow, and now here, self-defense situation, run away. Playing and sparring, boom, smash, get into a ground fight, use your cage work if you do MMA. If he throws that one, two, three at me, one, two, three, boom, I'm in. Right? If he throws that one, two, three, I'm here. Boom, and I come back. But notice my Wing Chun punches are short range. They're not gonna have a ton of power on them. So because they don't have a lot of power, you have to either have very good footwork to follow it up or very good footwork to get away. Either way that you look at it, don't think of it as style versus style. That's just clickbait, guys. What we're trying to do is learn to master ourselves, but really master the timing. Okay, understand when the punch is going to come and know where your threat is. Just reiterate that, 
here, my threat is that hand because I don't know where it is. If I have good Wing Chun, he can pull that hand back to throw the hook. But the second I let go of that and maybe go to Pak Fak entry and he enters with that hook, boom. I really, really have to be acknowledging that there are more threats. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to take a hit to give a hit. I spent my 20s doing that and now I'm probably not as smart as I should be because of that. In the street though, we want to be making sure that we're not taking damage. Number one thing, because maybe you deal with this guy, but his friend is right around the corner waiting for you. And if you don't have the energy to be able to deal with them, you're in trouble. That's why the best case scenario is always to get away as quick as you can. Train your ass off. Hey, what's going on? Way to make it to the end of the video. You're obviously very dedicated towards the learning of self-defense within your own self. So with that being said, if you want more information or if you want more things to train, I've had lots of people reach out and inquire like, how do I train with you, Kevin? How do I learn your system? My group classes are full. My private lessons are full. So unfortunately, I don't have anything for the time being. But Buddha Brothers and I, a couple of years ago, put together this fantastic digital seminar. And it literally goes through everything that you could probably think about. So with that being said, it's on BuddhaBrothers.com. Click the link below. Make sure to like and subscribe for all the major content that we're going to be putting out. And we're doing this free for you guys because we want you to build confidence for you to feel safer on the street so that we can make this world a great place. But you gotta train your ass off to get there. So keep up training, good job.